Hey, beautiful. Welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And today we are having a brand new setup. So I want you to sit back and relax for yourself for a moment and ask yourself, when's the last time that you were just going to focus on you where nothing else mattered, where the things that you need to do, you didn't have to focus on them, the people that need you, the errands you have to run, the things you need to get done around the house, the money that you should have made, could have made, whatever. What if we just put all that to the side for just one second and allowed yourself to just be present with you? So many times I feel like we're so overwhelmed by all these expectations of who we have to be. And recently I went to uh, several different women's events and I noticed a theme with how they started them in the beginning and it kind of blew me away. The fact that at one event, all the women were passed a note card and they were told not to open it. And so as we're sitting in these seats, I'm sitting around all these other women and there's like 800 women in the audience. We were all told to open this note card and on it were all these different phrases. Phrases like, I don't know if I deserve to be in this room. I've doubted myself this week. I've felt lonely. I don't like my body. I'm struggling financially. I don't feel like I'm good enough. And there were so many of these phrases and what we would have to do is we would have to circle the ones that pertain to us and we put them back in this envelope and passed them around anonymously to a bunch of other women. And one by one, we would stand up and we would read these aloud. And if you had a card that had a woman circle what she wrote, you would have to stand up for her. And to my surprise, out of 800 women in this room, on every single thing that was called, more than 75% of the room stood up on each thing. And I thought it was a very profound moment until I'm watching a second women's conference online virtually with uh, Tony Robbins, Sage Robbins' wife. And she reads from her journal different things that might be coming up for people. Same type of format. And so I was sitting with myself this week and I was thinking about all the things that come up for me. I don't know if this reigns true to you, but thoughts that sometimes come up in my head are, what if you do it wrong? What if people don't understand you? What if you're misunderstood? What if people don't get you? What if your attentions are great, but the perception that you're giving is not the best? What if you mess it all up? Man, I messed up there. Oh my gosh, I feel so guilty as a mom. I could have been there better for my daughter. I should have done this, could have done this and feeling just like anxious for not being enough. Like if those things go through my head every single day, right? Some more than others, some once a week, once a month, whatever. Why would they not come up for you in your brain and what's going on? And I think the difference between trying to understand yourself is also learning how to regulate these thoughts that are coming in your brain and know what to do with them so that they don't ruin aspects of your life. Being in sales, the one thing that definitely sets us apart, right, in elite saleswomen and our company is that we don't just train sales. Because if I give you all the tools all day long to learn how to sell better and I don't help you with tools to work on yourself, there's a really good chance that you're going to self-sabotage and mess everything up. We have to have strategies in place to shift our mindset because you are possibly your own worst enemy. And if we're just going to have a real conversation, what have you done or what have you said to yourself or what have you not done this past week? that has caused you to feel these feelings even more than what you should allow them to feel or you should allow yourself to feel. And what can we do to be able to have a better understanding to shift these quickly and to not let them ruin our lives? <sighs> I think there's so much pressure as a woman. There's so much pressure where we have all these expectations. We have to be feminine, but we can't be too like, too feminine. We have to be able to make our own money, but we can't be too hard and too cold <clears throat> or to be like 
say, oh, I don't need a man or whatever and like try to do everything ourselves. Um, we have to be nice, but we can't be a pushover. We have to be sexy, but not too sexy because then, you know, we might rub somebody the wrong way. Niceness can be turned into flirting. We look at another woman and maybe she judges us and doesn't even know us. There's just so much expectation of, of who we have to be and what we have to look like and how we have to perform and what we have to do, right? Like not only do I have to make sure that I run a company and a leader, I also have to make sure that I'm taking care of my daughter, being a good mom, being a good uh, girlfriend, making sure I have dinner prepared and like being playing housewife, you know, and like there's just like there's so much expectations that I put on myself that no one else puts on me that I put on myself and I have this perception of how I have to show up that it becomes almost impossible to fulfill that expectation within myself. And therefore, I don't feel enough. So what expectations do you have on yourself? What expectations do you have of how you have to show up and your perfectionism and, and what it has to look like and what it has to sound like? And do you have to make sure you give the kids a bath and you have to make sure the car is done, make sure that you're okay. Make sure that, you know, you're dressing good, you're eating good, you're going to the gym, being healthy, like all these expectations that you have on you. What are they? Like if you really stopped and you thought about it, do you make your life possibly like a little bit difficult for you? <laughs> Why are we so hard on ourselves? We're so hard. And yet at the same time, we don't feel like we belong. There's so many of us that goes through this imposter syndrome, right? Where we feel like we're just guessing as we go. And the reality of the situation is, is that most of us are. You got to play each day with a sense of gratitude and allowing yourself to have so much grace for yourself as you figure out each step as you go. Why is it that we give so much love? And we pour from our heart to everyone around us. And yet we don't give that love to ourselves. Not in the same way. Not in the same way we love our kids. Not in the same way we love our significant other. We we've tend to negate like giving ourselves the same love, the same affection, the same attention, the same grace, the same willingness to grow. <sighs> There's this really beautiful aspect of what we seek which is validation right we seek validation we want to know that what we're doing is good enough and some of us haven't learned to give ourselves validation we seek validation outside of ourselves and i'm completely guilty of that i'm completely guilty of you know feeling tired having a long day, working all day, feeling emotional, you know, and, you know, going to my man for validation of like, hey, you believe in me? <laughs> I just need someone to tell me they believe in me versus me telling myself that. We look for validation from others all the time. If you post yourself on Instagram, there's that dopamine hit people like right? External validation. There's the validation that we get, you know, from friends saying that we're doing a good job. Maybe from your team saying that you did it. We seek this validation. And some of us are willing to compromise who we are and compromise our values in order to even get it. I've definitely done that in my life. I'm not sure if you've done that in yours, but <sighs> what if we were to change the narrative for ourselves? What if we were to give ourselves the love and the validation that we've always been seeking and were to allow ourselves to <sighs> slow down just a little bit and to not rush so quickly to get that validation from others? If you sat with yourself right now and you really asked yourself like, hey, these negative thoughts that are coming up for me right now. <sighs> How can I shift these? Especially if you're thinking negative thoughts all the time. And negative thoughts are not just in one era. 
area of your life, right? Your brain is a very, very smart mechanism. Your brain is going to bring up things that are based in fear to distract you because it knows how to use your own worst fears against you. So maybe you're having negative thoughts in your business, maybe at work, maybe with your body, maybe with your kids, maybe with your man, you know, maybe with your friends, maybe you're having like bad thoughts in different areas. And so they start accumulating, right? And if I don't know how to shift these thoughts, they start building on top of another. Maybe you're having issues at work and now you're having issues at home and now you're having issues with your body. And one little thing sets you off and you implode. versus starting to understand how to shift these things as they come. You are the person that's in charge of your life. You're the one that gets to write the destiny. You're the one that gets to change everything. The reason why most people don't is because change is super scary. Change is super uncomfortable. Change will require for you to do something outside of the norms. And so we don't change, we stay the same. But at the ultimate end of the day, you are the person driving the ship here. You are the person that is allowing yourself to create new decisions and have new things in your life. And typically, when is the biggest time that you see the most changes? When you've gone through something extremely painful and you're willing to finally do something about it. So instead of us getting to that point where you get so internally painful inside your brain from having so much negative stuff going on all the time, what if we learned how to shift it sooner? And chose to shift it, even though it's uncomfortable, so that we don't have to go through total extremes to make big changes in our life. Once you have negative thoughts that go into your brain, one thing that you can do is change the language pattern. So if I'm saying something to myself that I know is not serving me, I got to change that real quickly because my head will start having a spiraling thought one thing and another thing and another thing and this thing from the past and this thing and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, oh my gosh, so overwhelming, right? My brain is like in panic. So I need to get myself out of that as quickly as possible. Let's say that I'm worried about um, making sure that I'm a great leader and making sure that I'm doing everything for my team. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what if this happens? What if this happens? All that stuff that doesn't serve me. I would stop everything that I'm doing and I would go grab a notebook and a piece of paper and I would write down and command myself. Ooh, excuse me. (laughs) I would write down and I would command myself of what I was going to do internally to fix this thought. So it might sound something like this. I now command myself to breathe. I'm extremely powerful. I'm a leader. This is my destiny. Everything that I do, I do with ease and grace. I attract people to me that are only leaders. I pour into them with my whole heart. People respect me and they believe in my vision and want to be with me through my growth. People believe in me enough to change their whole world around in order to see my vision through. The people on my team are loyal, they're hardworking, they're determined, they're disciplined. And I have every single thing that it takes to be there for them. And I'd be done. And I wouldn't be just writing this one time. I would, every single time this new doubt would come into my head, I would stop everything that I'm doing. I walk over to the mirror and I look at the mirror and I'm like, I now command myself. (laughs) And I go through the whole thing until I stop thinking like that. I don't care if I have to walk to that mirror 20 times today because that thought is not serving me. And if I don't do something now, it's going to destroy something. And you can do this with anything, which is so great. You can do this with your kids. You can do this with your, with your relationship. You can do this with anything where you are in a potential spot to ruin something because of the way that you are thinking. And the best part is, is that it's not your fault that you're thinking that way. That's the best part. Most of us have been through some type of trauma I don't know about you, but I've definitely been through a lot of stuff in my life. And one in three women have experienced some type of trauma, whether it be physical, emotional, or uh, sexual abuse. So whoever you're listening, or so whoever is listening to this right now, I don't understand what you've gone through. I maybe have my version of what I went through, but I don't 
I don't understand exactly every single little thing that you've been through. And I know that me saying sorry for what you went through, like, doesn't change anything. However, you are the only person that has the ability to change your story for yourself. And it's not your fault that those things happen, but it is your responsibility to make sure that the things that happen don't ruin your future moments. And if you really want something in the future and past situations are causing a lot of anxiety in your brain and causing you to think a lot of thoughts that don't serve you and are causing you to self-sabotage and ruin beautiful moments for yourself, it is up to you to fix it, baby girl. And the way we get to fix it is by doing different tools and using different tools so that you can get yourself out of a bad state as quickly as possible. If you let yourself sit somewhere, it doesn't help. And if you try one thing and it doesn't work, then you have to try something else. You should have a a whole bag of tools that you have in your tool belt so that when you're going through something and you're noticing that your brain is not thinking in a great mindset for you, that you're hurting yourself with your bad thoughts, that you're self-sabotaging, like whatever you're doing that you know doesn't serve you and you know is not the best, most highest version of you, it is up to you to fix that. Because otherwise, you're going to mess up so many amazing moments and so many amazing times in your life because you won't get out of your own damn way. And that's not fair. That's not fair to you. That's not fair to your mission and your destiny and who you're supposed to be. That's not fair to the people you're supposed to help. That's not fair to your kids. That's not fair to your significant other. That's not fair to the people in your life. And I know it hurts and I know it sucks and I know it's not fun getting uncomfortable and facing yourself. But if you won't do it, then who will? And what's going to happen if you don't do anything and you keep thinking like this and you keep messing up moments for yourself and you keep lacking to take responsibility to fix it? Who's going to be out of your life? Who's going to not want to talk to you? What are you going to ruin? And... I, hope, I really hope that it's okay that I have your permission right now to just be bold with you because if I just got on here and I was going to be real cutesy and whatever, and we were just talking random stuff without me being able to shift a little part inside of you to make you a better woman, like what the heck am I doing here? I'm not here just to talk. I want to be able to make a dramatic impact in your life, even if it's something so small. <sighs> Preparation is power. If you are mentally prepared for moments that come, it's so much more easier to navigate them. If you're not prepared and moments come and you don't have tools in your tool belt, oh, it's going to be rough. It's going to be pretty rough. I want you to learn how to celebrate your small wins. Celebrate the moments when you start thinking bad or assuming the worst or whatever, and you switch and you get into a really beautiful state of mind. You can't be afraid and angry and grateful at the same time. It's really hard for you to fear the worst and do deep breath work. Can you breathe through it? Can you allow yourself to find a moment of gratitude? If somebody hurt you, can you find a moment of gratitude for that person? Can you be in a state where you try to do every single thing in your power to protect you? to protect your mind, to protect your heart and not let people take your power away from you. If somebody can pull your energy away and you get all upset mur, 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 about somebody or about something and about a situation that doesn't serve you, that thing, situation, or person stole a bit of your power, stole your light. And I'm pretty sure that they probably don't deserve that. So instead, protecting you, protecting your energy and allowing yourself to embrace your own unique strengths and what you bring to the table and start to fall in love with you and start to validate who you are. Like, you know how crazy it is that you're even alive right now? I think there's like a one in one trillion chance that you were even born. That's insane. That's crazy. You know, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but I was watching a TikTok the other day and I'm and my background was in science. I still have like some science videos that pop up and they were showing like how an egg is fertilized in the womb. 
and they were showing like how many different ways that you know that it's not going to happen that most of the time the way to fertilize this egg like doesn't even reach the egg there's so many chances that you were not alive but yet you made it here and that you're here right now and you're healthy like you're alive you know like be grateful for that there's a reason as to why you're here and there's a reason as to why you're born. And if you haven't figured it out yet, it's okay. Like have some grace for yourself and allow yourself to just ask, God, please guide me. Please show me what I'm supposed to do. In the meantime, just calm down and take one day at a time and be grateful for the things that are around you. If you want something more for your life, you have to be willing to become a better you in order to receive that thing for anything in your world. If you want more, become more. And becoming more and growing is going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> like, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Everyone would have more money. Everyone would look more fabulous. Everyone would be more happy. But that requires a lot of healing and a lot of growth and a lot of willingness to look at yourself and see what the hell is not working and be willing to fix it. <sighs> I read somewhere recently that there's no such thing as someone being able to change. People can't change. However, they grow. They do grow. Where in your life do you need to grow? And if something isn't working, can you look back at yourself and say, like, where can I grow here? How can I become more in this situation? How can I develop more more love, more appreciation, more kindness, more peace, more patience? How can I be in that state? How can I serve in that way? How can I be the best me that I can be? And you can't do that, again, if you're getting in your own way. Um, I talked a little bit about, you know, some affirmations that you can do. I think also visualizing who you want to be is so incredible visualizing a moment that hasn't happened yet first of all what's really great is when you visualize a future moment that hasn't happened yet you release serotonin and oxytocin in your brain and you create a memory that hasn't happened yet which is absolutely incredible because your brain doesn't understand the difference between future moments and reality it has no idea that's why past moments you when your brain remembers them they feel so painful even though it happened 10 years ago because your brain doesn't associate that that happened 10 years ago it feels like it happened yesterday and you can bring future moments closer to you by imagining them and sitting with yourself and being grateful for a future moment that hasn't happened yet the caveat to that is that if you imagine a lot of bad things <laughs> It's a really good chance that you're going to manifest these bad things in. So be careful. Guard your mind. Guard your heart. And remember that whatever is coming out of you is typically what you are putting inside of you. So if you're constantly around people talking negative, that's what you're going to be talking like negative. You want to be around people that bring you up, that make you a better you, that pour into you, that speak life into you, that will not accept you playing at a mediocre level. They won't accept it. They know that you're meant for more. And I won't accept you living your life on 20% and not playing full out and showing up as a lesser version of yourself because I know without a shot of a doubt that there's so much in this life for you and that you can do anything that you put your mind to as long as you believe in yourself and you have a willingness to get uncomfortable and a willingness to grow, a willingness to make some changes in your life, a willingness to want more, you deserve so much more. If you feel like, oh, everything is good right now, everything's fine, like, it's a very dangerous place to be. You want to become more. You want to be able to shoot for the moon so that you can land among the stars. You want to be in a place where you grow so much that you can give back and help others. Like that's what this is about. Being able to be the voice for people that don't have one. Anyways, I honor you today. I just wanted you to have some tools in the back of your tool belt to be able to support you so that on those days where you're having rough moments, like I have had so many times, you can at least get yourself out of that 
and be able to start working towards who you want to become. You as a woman in business or a woman in sales, like there's so many expectations of who you have to be. I want you to start writing your own expectations. Who do you want to be? How do you want to show up, babe? How do you want to play full out? How much money do you want to make? What example do you want to be making for your kids or for your future kids? Who do you want to be? Because it's not about the fancy car. It's not about the house. It's not about the things that you're going to have because you can have all these things that feel completely empty inside. It's not about the goal. It's about the woman that you become in the process. And your process is going to be messy and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be full of lessons. But that is where you can have gratitude for yourself, for being a warrior, for being so powerful and be willing to go through that process in order to get to where you want to go and become who you want to be. So again, I honor you. Thank you for listening. I will see you on the next episode. Have an amazing day, babe.